Sad Talker and Zoe Death work really well together. Okay, so Sad Talker is an algorithm that basically gets you from um, some sort of face into a talking face. So it can move static images around and make it look like they're talking. And then we have Zoe Depth, which is a new mono depth algorithm. So something that calculates out the depth of each pixel and then kind of estimates how far away it is from the camera. And using those two things alone, we can kind of create these 3D faces that are moving around. This isn't face rigging. This isn't like you're not putting a mesh onto the face. This is just guessing how far each pixel is away. Mono Depth has had a really big like temporal problem. It doesn't have a lot of temporal coherence, but Zoe Depth actually has a lot more than kind of previous algorithms. And it also does a really good job with face structure. So um, a lot of previous algorithms, they kind of just have faces as a round object. Uh, but this gets like some of the details like noses and eyes and um, lips and things like that. So it, it does a lot better job of those close up. And it just is really impressive. So basically the implementation all happens inside of Auto 111. So to start off with, we uh, just take some sort of image that we really like. So you can generate a bunch. It does need to be a human looking face, but for the most part, it just like works. And then you have a moving face that matches the audio that you put in. Side Talker outputs really low resolution images. So you do need to upsample those. I was finding SkewNet to be pretty good for like the really low resolution to normal resolution upscaling. After you do that, you just drop these things in the depth algorithm and it just spits you back out. Um, and like, it looks pretty good. So to get this into Blender, you get a grid. You fill that out as the resolution of the images that you're using. So if it's 512 by 512, you put that in there and then you can go to the materials, add a material. Uh, for the color, you'll use an image sequence and that will be the sad talker image that's been upscaled to 512 by 512. Uh, and then you can do auto refresh and that basically just refreshes the image every time you scroll around. You also do need to add in the amount of frames that you want to use. So if you want to use like 300 frames, you just put that there. You need to add in the displacement that will be attached to the depth map. You go into the modifiers, you uh, add in a displacement modifier, and then to get it working, you can basically just do a rendering. I also had this scene on a bridge, and I think it does a really good job of showing different strengths and weaknesses of the different algorithms. So in particular, you can see that Midas does a really good job with geometric objects. There's a lot of straight flat edges, um, but it does a really, like it tends to blur out the distant background. So a lot of that gets flattened out, whereas the other algorithms have the background, but there's some warping in the foreground. So um, there's a lot of like these kind of corridors end up being warped a little bit differently. So from this, it appears that Zoe Depth uses a little bit of a different projection. So you might need to change some of your math to kind of compensate for that uh, if you were using Midas before. But it's also really interesting to look at the railing and how good of a job Zoe Depth does at that. So in particular, uh, Midas kind of blurs out the railing. It kind of mixes those things together, whereas the boost algorithm creates a bunch of extra details, but it kind of loses the geometric aspect. So they're not really flat as flat surfaces, whereas Zoe Depth ends up actually being able to get a high contrast between the foreground and the um, background. I did try and use a few different deflickering algorithms to kind of smooth out the depth map, but in particular, one of the things that kind of comes up a lot is that the images are in 16-bit and a lot of these algorithms are based on 8-bit, so it takes a little bit more effort to get them working. And then also a lot of them end up creating a lot of artifacts because they aren't really designed that way. So that's going to require a little bit more work, but I'm kind of interested in like looking into it in more detail. But uh, I also saw a very similar workflow from McMumpets where they used uh, depth maps as well, and then they used EB synth to do the motion capture part of it. And it looked really nice as well. If you're really interested in quality, you might want to look into MetaHuman and uh, some of the more kind of facial rigging programs. That's all I have for today. Have a good day. <laughs>